recommending it to the House. Kia ora. I call Jan Logie. Madam Speaker, um, I too rise to speak um, on behalf of the Green Party in support of the second reading of the Ngāti Tama Oho Claim Settlement Bill and acknowledge, as always, um, the sense of responsibility and privilege to be able to speak on settlement bills in this House. Um, so, and also the but more importantly, the sacrifice of the um, hapū in getting to this point and how long the journey has been for them to get here today, one step to the end of this settlement process. So, on second reading, I, it is our tradition in the Greens to talk about the process and the submissions in the select committee as well as restating some of the history because it is so rarely that New Zealanders get to hear that history of what has happened in our country. So I will take a moment to imperfectly retell some of that story. And so part of the process of colonisation in this country is that many New Zealanders, myself included, will hear the words Ngāti Tama Oho, and they won't know where those people are from. So I'm going to take a moment to try and explain as well as my geography allows where the people of Ngāti Tama Oho live and where they are from. So there's a hapū that extends from northern Waikato, South Auckland area, and they've lived across that rohi for centuries and that that extends um, from the north of the Tamaki Isthmus to south of the Waikato River and Whangamarino wetlands and from the west coast right across to the Hauraki Gulf of Thames. So as has been mentioned by other speakers, in describing the breadth and ex extent of that rohi, we understand also the... Um, the fertility of that land and the wealth that exists on that land now and have a sense of the pain that must be felt from the people of Ngāti Tama Oho from the displacement from that land and that wealth that exists there now. As they described in their submission, as a hapū that they were numerous iwi with extensive pā throughout these areas that now no longer exists. In their submission, they noted um, the comments from the historian who helped them with the researching of their claim, the historian David Armstrong, and I want to quote that directly because their submission was short because it had been a very long process to get to this point. And I think it is meaningful in this message and it should be shared. So in the words of the historian, he said, I doubt that any other iwi in New Zealand suffered as grievously at the hands of their treaty partner as Tama Oho. In my long experience as a treaty historian, I have certainly encountered no other iwi who were treated as harshly as this. And of course, it's not a competition of who is harmed the most, but it does seem really important in this house to acknowledge the depth of loss and pain and wrong of the state towards Ngāti Tama Oho. Um, so as a bit of a description of some tiny little bit of what happened to them. So that after the signing of Te Tiriti, um, Ngāti Tama Oho sought new economic opportunities and sell, sold some of their land in Remuera. At that time, it was a sales arrangement where there was an expectation that one-tenth of that land would be reserved for public purposes and for the benefit of Māori. And the Crown failed to do this. 
um, and the Crown purchasing activities after that created tensions between iwi that led to armed conflict. And this is a pattern we hear commonly across the country. And then in the, in the 1840s and 50s, Ngāti Tama Oho Rangatira were recognised as being friendly to Pahia. And they were quite successful and engaged in that new economy at the time. And then so shortly after that, in the 1860s, I think, the Crown decided that Māori in South Auckland, in this rohi, would be required to swear an oath of allegiance or vacate their settlements. And they didn't give the people of Ngāti Tamaoho time to be able to consider that demand. And despite there being a, a history of peaceful engagement with the Crown, that the Crown troops burnt buildings and looted properties at Pokeno, and then labelled most of Ngāti Tamaoho as rebels and evicted them from their settlements and confiscated most of their remaining lands. Lands of which we, as Pahia in this country, have benefited significantly from the development of. So I, that is just a tiny part of that history of um, colonisation and um, abuse of, those, of the people in that area. And I want to acknowledge that this process and the settlement process is meant to create a platform to move forward, for them to have redress and acknowledgement and an apology. But I also want to acknowledge that in their submission they note that their experience of negotiating this has been painful but that they set themselves key criteria for that negotiation to resolve as quickly as possible, to be able to have a new future for themselves, and not to undermine relationships with other iwi and hapu. And in an area where there are many iwi and hapu, that was no small feat. And it has been spoken about many times already in this debate of um, the incredible example that they set in doing this. And that I understand this is the first treaty settlement bill that has come to the House without any opposing submissions. Because Ngāti Tamaoho put so much effort into resolving the concerns with other hapu and iwi through tikanga processes outside of this formal settlement. And they again, I believe, should be acknowledged for that. And I want to commend them for their spirit of kotahitanga and recognise that many of the tensions that often come up are an impact of Crown actions and the process of colonisations, that colonisation that in all too many ways go unchallenged by the settlement process. And that we still sadly often end up with accounts of history that are limited by the prescribed language of the Crown, which to me seems <laughs> unavoidably another act of colonisation. So, I do want to um, acknowledge that, that this is imperfect, but the um, Ngāti Tama Oho have done an incredible job for their people in this environment to be able to create a platform for their people to move forward, which has resulted in a settlement, a vesting of sites, changing of 21 geographic place names, statutory acknowledgements and deeds of recognition for 43 places that will enable their ongoing participation in RMA processes that give life to Te Tiriti or Waikatangi, as well as the financial and commercial redress. So I'm pleased to finish now, to move one step closer to the final settlement for these people. 
I call Pam Jit, Pam Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity to take uh, this call on Nati Tamao Claims Settlement Bill.